Hey, what's up guys? My name is Alex Chung and today we're talking about the Canon 5D Mark IV. If you're a filmmaker in the market for a new camera, there's tons of different options out there and the best one is the one that fulfills most, if not all, of your needs. Here's why I think that the Canon 5D Mark IV might be the best camera for you. The 5D Mark IV has been out since 2016 and it shoots 4K up to 30 frames per second, 1080p up to 60 frames per second, and 720p up to 120 frames per second. It's a full frame camera that has the same dual pixel autofocus system for video that you can find in their cinema EOS line and some of their newer DSLR models. Now I've had the 5D for about two months now and the main reason I can tell you why I chose the 5D over one of the Sony A7 cameras is because of the dual pixel autofocus. It is hands down one of the best autofocusing systems that I've ever used. The work that I do is mainly commercial and event videography which means I'm usually by myself operating the camera on location. I don't have a budget to rent a wireless follow focus system and get a first assistant camera operator to help me pull focus. So having a solid autofocus system that nails the focus every time you press record is such a time saver not only on commercial shoots but it's also a lifesaver when you're shooting weddings and you need to get those quick and important moments. The full frame sensor is also another reason why I absolutely love the 5D Mark IV. Not only does the full frame sensor give you that shallower depth of field for that oh so good looking bokeh, it also performs much better in low light situations versus smaller sensors like the APS-C or Micro Four Thirds. The bigger sensor allows you to let in more light so that you don't have to crank the ISO super high in order to get a decently lit but really noisy image. Again, because I do a lot of event videography, I don't have the luxury of lighting the location, so most of the time I'm stuck with using available light. And having the ability to gather as much light as possible while keeping the ISO relatively low is something that a full frame sensor like the 5D excels at. The ability to shoot 4K at 24 frames per second and 1080p at 60 frames per second for slow motion on this camera is one of the last reasons why I really love using the 5D. Now I know a lot of people have an issue with the 1.74 crop factor and also the huge file sizes that this camera produces. But from a filmmaker standpoint, the 1.74 crop factor is already very similar to the 1.6 super 35 millimeter crop factor that you already find on the RED cameras, the RA cameras, and the C300s anyways. The 500 megabits per second file sizes are huge, but if you're already working with RED footage, if you're using an external recorder like the Atomos recorders to get your files, you'll be very familiar with the huge but robust file sizes that the 5D produces. I've got a couple links down below for some of the best SD cards that you can find for the 5D Mark IV. The 5D's build quality is excellent, and it's one of those things that you really don't consider sometimes. Ergonomically, it's really comfortable to hold in the hand, and the fact that it has weather sealing means that I don't have to worry if I'm going outside to shoot and all of a sudden it starts raining. It's also built like a tank, so I feel like if I drop it accidentally, it might actually break the floor. I don't want to find out because I don't want to have to replace a floor. Now moving away from the pros, let's talk about some of the cons and maybe why you absolutely don't want to purchase this camera. First, the video recording capabilities of this camera is limited to 8-bit internal and external recording. So that means if you're planning to do a heavy color grade or if you're working with a lot of green screen, you're going to run into a lot of problems like banding because it just doesn't have enough color science and enough color information to provide a smooth gradation for grading and keying in post. Speaking of external recording, the HDMI only outputs 1080p. 4K output on this camera is not supported. It would have been so awesome if the 5D could record full frame 4K 10-bit via HDMI, but uh, yeah, that's a no. That's a no for Canon. Another downside of the 5D is that it is quite heavy and I can't use my Jing V1 crane in order to fly my 5D properly. The bulkiness of the mirror inside the camera adds to the overall weight of the camera and with a full frame lens attached to it, it just makes it way too heavy. In order to get that gimbal shot, I'm probably going to have to look into getting either the Ronin-M or Jing's crane 2. 
One of the last things to consider is that full frame lenses can be expensive. So be prepared to invest in a good zoom lens like the Tamron 24 to 70 or a couple prime lenses. I'll have some links down below for those lenses for you to check out. But that's it. Let me know in the comments down below about what you think of the 5D and if you agree or disagree with some of the things that I was saying about the camera. Again, what you need in a camera might be much different than what I need in my own camera. If you're shooting weddings, if you're shooting corporate videos, events, running gun stuff, then the 5D might have some of the features that you might need. However, if you're on a professional set all the time and you're looking for a new camera, then the 5D probably isn't the one for you. You might wanna look into one of the Sony a7 cameras, the GH5, the GH5S, the Blackmagic Cinema cameras that have the video capabilities and the video features that might cater better to the on-set filmmaker. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications to get future content. My name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later.